Well, hello there, my fellow youpreneurs. Welcome back to another monthly chit chat here inside of the academy. It's great to be sitting with you. Whenever I do that, I think money. It's all about the money, Come baby. Hey. I'm here with Sean Kenoff from Think Media. Just hit a million subscribers Man. on YouTube. I keep like, I have to keep celebrating this sure. for you because no, you're it. so happy about it. It's good. Today we're going to be talking, um, for those of you who don't know Sean, I mean like you've been on YouTube for over a decade now, grinding it out. Um, I love watching your Inst his Instagram stories begin with the same thing every single day. Give it to me. Rise and grind. It's a new day full of new opportunities, new, new possibilities. New possibilities. Let's I love it. <laughs> crush. Let's crush. Um, today, I'm going I'm to cut this conversation up into two bits, right? So gear, kit, all that fun stuff, all the way from our good old mobile phones, maybe up a notch or two as well if you want to go a little bit more pro. Um, and then just YouTube growth really, like really focusing in on the growth side of it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sean also hosts a um, conference every year in Las Vegas called Grow With Video Live. I'm very, very blessed to be keynoting this year. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. I haven't been to Vegas for, I think for like five or six years. It's gonna be fun. So I promise I won't get arrested while on your watch. I don't know if you can promise that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, all right, let's talk. I think the big thing here is that a lot of people in here inside of the academy, they know that video is huge. Obviously, they see us now doubling down on it in 2020 and beyond as well. Um, and, you know, there's a reason why I've decided after all these years of kind of flirting with YouTube on and off. You know, we've gone through spurts where we've got like really focused for three, four months, but we don't see the growth that we want to. And then we kind of, you know, we move on and we do other things. This is the time really to start taking YouTube super seriously. And I think that a lot of issues, a lot of people are having issues with like, oh, my camera's not good enough. My light's not good enough. My audio doesn't sound great. But really, we're fine with what we've already got with our phones. 100%. Right? We just need to step up, you know, and hit record kind of thing. Talk us through a little bit about sort of what we need to do with our kit to kind of get ready to start taking things a little bit more seriously. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing, and you kind of said it, is is first I'd want to say that you have to sell yourself on YouTube. And I just had a conversation last night. Naturally, you're talking to a global audience and even the EU and all these kind of things. But I was talking, you know, YouTube's a U.S. company, and I was talking to a social media lawyer last night. And the FTC is really cracking down on a lot of paid traffic stuff. They're changing laws around what people will be able to do with Facebook ads, which a lot of people's businesses rely on, and even YouTube ads. And so I just think about YouTube. It's the second largest search engine in the world. It's the number one video site in the world, and it's the second most visited website in the world. It's free to use. And when you look at a lot of top entrepreneurs, they've been intentional about building a pillar of influence on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing about YouTube is like really you got to sell yourself that this is going to take work. This is, I'm gonna to have to punch fear in the face. I'm gonna to have to figure out some tech stuff. Yep. But it's so worth it. And I know you're doubling down for that reason mm -hmm. because you're really, you're planting seeds today for the harvest that you wanna to reap tomorrow. Absolutely. And so uh, sell yourself that like, you gotta push through and figure this stuff out. And the cool thing is that to start, you really don't need much, and you can start with your smartphone. In fact, we've got a series on our channel where uh, Heather teaches, and she, this to put it in perspective, she's our chief operation officer. She's a homeschool mom, so she has a homeschool channel that's growing on autopilot through some of these strategies that we'll talk about in the growth section. And she, when we first met though, was totally afraid of tech, didn't wanna be on video, didn't know how to use a fancy camera. Right, right. And just started shooting with her smartphone. The first thing she did actually was she committed to doing stories at the time on Snapchat. Now you could do it on Instagram. Wow, okay, yeah. And the reason she committed to do it was not to grow her business or her brand, was to just get used to being on camera. Sure, get build up the confidence. To build up the confidence. Yeah. And so after doing that for a little while, she just uses her phone to build her channel. It's growing by a couple hundred subscribers a month. She's at like 15,000 subscribers. No fancy tech, no major know-how, simple video editing apps on your phone. Really? No so, she, so she's literally doing everything on a device just on her phone and right. we have a free series where just it's just on YouTube publicly how to shoot on your phone how to create a quick thumbnail from your phone set the timer up sit there smile right and then <laughs> and then that's your thumbnail Been there, done that put right. a little graphics on there and then and then edit it quick and then also upload it from your phone and of course you can go a little bit faster with the laptop or whatever but right. yeah 
It's that is really all you need now. No, but you say that though. Let's let's break that down real quick. Like you can go faster on the laptop, but I think that if you pull up an editing software package on sure. your laptop, you're more likely to start trying to like get all the bells and whistles going, and it'll overcomp. Maybe it won't be faster. Maybe it'll be slower. Maybe it'll be a pain in the butt to kind of figure out how to use it and everything, right? And I'm sometimes keeping it simple is is better. Well, I agree, and, I, and especially because complexity is the enemy of execution, mm -hmm. and so you don't want to get too fancy too soon as well right. because you're not going to publish any videos no and so yeah starting with your phone now practically i think there are a few accessories that are pretty essential i think you should buy a tripod mm -hmm. and you should make sure it has a little phone mount on it so yes. that it can pinch your phone yep. and that'd be available on whatever you know amazon global amazon, whatever right yeah and so uh grab some of those things and then maybe a light kit of some kind you could get like a 60 dollar softbox light kit and audio so here's the three letters right a v l audio video lighting you're using your phone but be conscientious of the audio right even if you're just doing like the selfie thing with your phone and whatnot you don't want to do that in a train station no. you don't want to do that next to the tarmac at the airport i mean you know you don't want to do it in a noisy party sure if you're in like a room just like this kind of low ceilings the audio on your phone's actually gonna be pretty phenomenal you also want to think about lighting you don't want to shoot in a dark dungeon you know right like if you're by a window you'd be making some weird videos if you're well, filming in a dungeon maybe you do that's what i am <laughs> <laughs> so, right, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, good work. And so to just be conscientious. And, but if you're going to invest in a few accessories for your phone, a little tripod that's going to keep it steady, mm -hmm. maybe a plug-in lavalier mic, which should be corded. You plug it in your now, lightning you see, I use the Rode lav mic, sure. which I've had for years. And although over the time I've had to kind of get new adapters for it to go into new phones and stuff, that is money. Yes. Now, I use that actually when I'm at conferences and stuff. I have it in my pocket. I mean, in fact, actually, I'm already mic'd up. I've got my phone in my pocket with it plugged in. And if I'm in a position where I'm getting stopped or asked questions and that sort of type of thing, and my wife or somebody else is with me, I say, honey, shoot this video. And so she'll shoot it. And I'll just hit record on the sound app on my phone. And then we'll sync the sound and the video later. And as long as you're in a well-lit place, you've got some really good content like that. And it picks up your voice perfectly. Even in a crowded conference and things like that, it'll pick up your voice just fine. And I think I paid like... Thirty dollars for it That's a right. few years ago or something. It's nothing. Yeah, the, none of this tech really has to, to break the bank. The other thing I would say is there's a lot of opportunity just to be using your webcam, which could be computer based, built into your laptop, mm -hmm. or the classic Logitech. I think it's C so C920 something or another. Yeah, and that that's like around a fifty or sixty dollar mic. I don't yep. know how many pounds, but you know that uh, that mic uh, or that that webcam, um, as well as a USB mic. That's kind of I think that's key is mm -hmm. having a good USB mic when you're talking your computer. I think about a friend of mine, Rachel Miller from Moolah Marketer. She actually just repurposes her Facebook lives on YouTube, but she puts some good thumbnails up, some good right. titles, right. and she's getting hundreds of views. You know, that's again, thinking that before you try to get fancy, and even the videos you're putting out, I could see those being a little intimidating. You got some really crispy stuff. You're right. sitting in front of a bookcase. Yes. You look all, you got your vest very, on. Very sort of royal. Yeah, almost. it looks super royal, super crispy, and I think that can be intimidating, but what's, this is what I've learned. It's actually really not about the production value. It's about the content value. Of course it is, always. It, it's what are you delivering. Now, production value can enhance that, but some of just those simple things, that's where it's gotta start. And, and when you start simple, you can scale over time. I've seen even people who are competent in video allow their workflow to get too complex right. that it just bogs down the output right. of content. You know, it's funny you say that because the stuff that we've done, you know, we, we've shot a whole bunch of stuff now for the channel, some of which hasn't even come out yet, obviously, because we batch. I shoot 12 videos in a day and then we batch for months to come, literally, right? And it's interesting because there have been times on a couple of occasions where, although those were scripted and on a teleprompter, I wasn't feeling it. And so I just say, you know what, just turn it off. I'm just gonna riff. I'm just gonna chat to the camera. And we've done it a couple of times. Now, you guys tuning in actually might not know the difference. Yeah, that's how good I am. <laughs> you might actually not f see the difference, right? I know the difference. And on the a couple of occasions that we've done it, I've actually felt pretty easy going about being in that more professional setup and still just ad-libbing for five or six minutes rather than actually just reading through a script. So I hear you on that. Um, and I think, you know, the big thing for us is also as we, depending on when this goes live, I believe this will be an April uh, publishing uh, inside of the Academy. This month we start 
with the pro once a week and the more kind of vloggy amateurish kind of Blair Witch Project yes, <laughs> kind yes. of public pu- uh, publication as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how people react to the two. And the reason why I've done that, and I'm curious to hear your feedback on this actually, is that at some point in the future, we might decide to ditch the more pro setup and just go really easy setup, really not amateurish, but just like more easy going setup for everything moving forward. And we don't want people to have that shock to the system where, oh, there's no bookcase, where's the waistcoat? You know, that sort of type of thing. What would you think about that? I'm curious, actually, as I've got you here. No, I think it's brilliant, and I think uh, what what gets us trapped is a lot of entrepreneurs is we overthink, yeah. and we make up, we get really romantic about what we think will or will not oh, work. Oh, totally, you know? absolutely. We just, yeah. we're, we're like, this is what it is, and this is why it worked, but I love what you're doing, because what it really comes down to is testing and experimenting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because for, I mean, maybe that vlog style won't work as good, it causes you to pivot back. Maybe it outperforms to such a degree that it's just the right decision totally. because the real and the raw. And then I think, really, my opinion on a YouTube strategy is I think both are important. Meaning, uh, you talk a lot about personal branding. I think there's a time and place to maybe hire it out, like hire somebody out, help them film some stuff, have some branded, like real fan. You know, you get somebody on a gimbal and they've got mm-hmm, some mm-hmm. shots of you, B roll, and that yep, whole thing. Yep. That then kind of positions you as you know a little bit more of that higher uh, you know brand but those types of videos are ultimately not macro what performs over and over meaning you have that people go okay look at the prestige look at the brand but then they see you just raw to the phone so i think it's not either or it's both and i think like there was an old video years ago from gary vaynerchuk where he shot himself looking like the emperor from star wars on the airplane i remember that one dark circles under his eyes super speaking of a dungeon yeah yeah, i know he's like he's like he's like like, i got i got something i want to get off my chest and he just ranted for like five ten minutes and it blew up yep horrible audio horrible Horrible video quality, yet it just blew up because the content was so fire. And he's an example of both. He's got the whole D Rock side yeah. of things, yeah. the highly produced show side of things, and then the raw to the phone side of things. But what I've noticed is that when you measure views, a lot of times that real and raw might get more impact, more views, more response, more comments. But that's not to negate the power of the branding because the branding type of videos also uh, are sending a different message or maybe connecting in yeah. a different way and establishing truly your brand uh, as a professional. But then it's also somebody that can let their hair down and just really, just really, truly be themselves. And really, I mean, at the at the core of what we talk inside of Youpreneur is P to P, people to people, showing your real, honest, authentic self being super not I, I hate to use the word transparent because it's overused but just being you because people will naturally attract to you if they're your vibe if they're your tribe your yes. vibe will attract your tribe right that's what it's about um before we go deep into the growth stuff real quick if we've been going for a little while or if we're about to start and things start looking real good for us what would you say would be a good next level camera We've got our phones, they've worked well, but we want to just step it up. Just one, just give us one, you know, piece of kit that is kind of like a no brainer, easy to use, point and shoot sort of type of camera to kind of level things up a little bit. Yeah, I think the next move to this day is the Canon M50. Okay. And uh, we now are seeing this on like the Canon US website. You can get it refurbished with a one year warranty, so it's as good as new. They just, you know, bring it back. For like four hundred and seventy dollars. Oh, that's nothing. This is an APS-C camera, meaning it's got a nice big sensor, and that's one of the the differences between a phone camera. No matter what happens to them, they're always going to have a sensor that's super small. Right. And as the sensor gets bigger, it's looking better in low light. You have better photography potential, which out of that same camera, maybe you have somebody, a spouse helping you, a business partner, a team member, an employee. You could get start getting better phone, thumbnails, better photography for social media. Yep. But a beautiful image. And what I love about really, it's Canon and Sony that have the market on this is is their autofocus and then the flip screen to selfie so that's going to have that flip screen to selfie so you could set it up in your home office flip it towards you tap your face you're going to stay in focus the whole time right a little bit of a learning curve we've got an entire we'll walk you through step by step yep. just on on youtube on think media um but i think at the price point it's got the he- the mic input okay and then you have interchangeable lenses so you can start you know getting maybe a really cool wide angle lens if you have a smaller office and right. you need that okay you can switch the lenses out and it doesn't have to break the bank everything's super affordable so yeah i mean 
that the new cameras have been coming out, but we recommend a lot of tech on our channel. And I want to say we've we've sold thousands, maybe ten thousand of these cameras through affiliate wow. marketing. Wow. Um, and that's just not because us marketing them it's because they truly everybody gets it they loves work. it yeah they really work yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. at a price point that gives you a, a really high uh picture quality and user friendliness and the whole experience for what you're paying yeah it's a really great 500 camera. bucks is nothing really for, for that sort mm -hmm. of investment yeah cool okay let's switch gears go to growth you just hit a million subs uh that's no small feat in any way shape or form uh other than being consistent, knocking out great content, how the heck do we do it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. to this day, my favorite strategy for YouTube is the fact that YouTube is a search engine. Right. And especially for people that are serving people with their knowledge, their expertise, um, I think a good starting point is to think about, you know, what are the top 10 frequently asked questions related to your industry and your business? Um, and then the second list to make is what are the top 10 maybe should ask questions that, uh, you know, you could uh, be creating on your channel. The power of that is that YouTube is a search engine and 68% of people go to YouTube to answer questions. Right. Now, a lot of times this sometimes uh, it could be like your dishwasher breaks and you're wondering if there's a YouTube video. Oh, totally. I, I, I got a new coffee maker a while ago and I was like, how in the heck am I not getting the little arrow into the espresso range? I need to figure this out. So I YouTube so it. You, <laughs> you don't Google it, you YouTube it. <laughs> and so, uh, and me, a short story to even illustrate that, you know, now I've got a focused niche and, and, and building a more clear personal brand. But for a while I was just experimenting on my personal channel, Sean Cannell, and I would discover something, I would answer that question and I would connect it to affiliate marketing. So I got a Starbucks Verismo machine and it was a little, kind of like a Keurig, it has like the little pods. Yeah. But the pods were uh, kind of, you know, over a dollar a pod. So I was like, this is the same price as going to Starbucks itself. Right. So then I'm at my friend's house and I find out that uh, her and her husband are using coffee bean tea leaf pods in their Starbucks Verismo. I pull it out, I'm like, look at all this variety of pods. You guys are using these different, these fit, these work? And they go, yeah, they fit. And we just buy them from the uh, Coffee Bean Tea Leaf website. And I thought, hmm, maybe they're on Amazon. So I went to Amazon. Sure enough, they were. Ordered some, tried them, amazing. I got more coffee at about half the price. And Amazon has affiliate links. Right. So I sure enough, I go to, and this is where the strategy comes in. You can do keyword research to actually find what people are searching for. So I thought... Uh, okay, this experience that I'm living through, I wonder if other people are looking for this kind of stuff. And the question was, do CBTL pods work in Starbucks for Verismo? And then also, the second kind of title I put in there was Starbucks Verismo pods cheap, because it's essentially the same thing right. for much more affordable. Well, to this day, Chris, that video ranks in search because people that were trying to fix their coffee machine like you yeah. are like, do CBT help us yeah, sure. work in Starbucks for Eastville? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm here to tell you they do. Let me show you. In fact, they're affordable. Here's the different coffee. So I sell coffee every day. <laughs> Someone clicks on my affiliate link and I say, by the way, if you want to get them, they're on Amazon, even a better price. They'll ship right to your door. You can set up monthly reoccurring subscription to right. this. And there's a link in the description. So the key is you want to ask yourself this question, what topics is your target audience searching, searching for? for. Right. And then you want to reverse engineer and make videos that are optimized around that. So you want to answer that question, power tip, one keyword phrase, one video. Mm -hmm. You don't want to try to answer 10 questions right. in an hour long video. You might want to make 10 videos for each specific totally. thing. Yeah. So it could be, how do you get views on YouTube? Okay. Well, how do you get, make money on YouTube? Okay. Well, how do you set up your channel? In some cases, and it would be a valuable video to combine that all into one sure. super video. But then if you kind of try and reach every topic, you'll end up reaching none of the none topics. Of them. Exactly. Yeah. As opposed to going sniper to each specific thing. That process is how I've basically built an empire on YouTube. And to this day, um, what becomes fascinating is then it's not just the questions your target audience is asking. Maybe you're helping people with finances or wealth management and your how to save on end of year taxes or this versus that investment strategy, a lot of specific things. But then you could get into things like reviewing software. Mm -hmm. Software, cameras, products, all actually have inherent influence. Maybe not all of them, but some, for example, around 200,000 people search for the M50 a month. 
So people, the Canon M50 we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So people don't know Sean Cannell. They know they want a tutorial on the Canon M50. Right. Or they're curious, should I get the Canon M50 or this Sony camera? And when I answer that question, they meet me in the middle. Sure. And now I have an opportunity to one, just meet them on their journey. They come through and they say, I hate this guy, man. This guy, what's his hair doing? Like, what's going on? You know, right. and they just bounce. I mean, that's going to happen. You're going right. to, or they go, you know what? He gave me good information. I don't want to join him for the journey. I'm not going to be a part of his tribe. Sure. But maybe there's even a, an affiliate transaction there. They go, man, really good case for why this camera's better. They click that link. You generate income in the process. But the third you know, opportunity, what we all want to do, is that they're, they're like, I was just looking for a camera, right? but I met you and I connected with you. They click subscribe. Here's the powerful thing. Not every video you make needs to be so search-based. Right. These are just going to be videos that actually attract and grow your subscriber base. Once you have that, you can make videos about anything you want. Of Go course. live, yeah. lob something out, make a video with a title like, we need to talk about this, dot, dot, dot. And it'll and still just, get a whole bunch of views. And it'll right. still get views. Because you've done the work up Because front. you've built a base. Right, but right. really the place to start is to think about what are the topics people are searching for. Learn how to do a level of keyword research. And I would also say this as an action item for your community. You should write down your top 5 to 20 keywords. Mm -hmm. And what's a keyword? It's those search phrases or those search topics. I would think one for you would be personal branding. Totally. Absolutely. I think there would be ones around entrepreneurship, but the more specific for me it would be how to get views on YouTube. Yeah. That'd be like a keyword phrase that is a pillar keyword phrase. For well, me. we know this. Look, as, uh, look, there's two ways to do the research as well, according to us, right? The, it, on YouTube directly. And we're actually using a tool called TubeBuddy as well, which I'll link to bef below the video here. But you know, do that research without a doubt. But then secondly, the big thing that we did is we actually reached out to about, I don't know, probably half a dozen people at the end of last year. And we said, we're gonna get more specific with our content. We didn't say video content. We just said we got more specific with our content going into 2020. What kind of stuff do you wanna hear about? And we had, out of, out of six people, three of them said, I'd love to hear more about Chris's burnout story because they know it's out there already, but I'd love to know more about the burnout. What were the signs? What happened the day he realized? How did he recover? How does he now avoid it, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we've, I think we shot like four videos about burnout, like what the symptoms are, what are the signs, how to avoid all this stuff because we know people want it. So it's not just about doing the more clinical keyword research. Right. It's also actually talking to your audience members, your community members already, and then giving them ultimately what they want, right? Well, that's a win-win-win right there because you asked, super powerful, just ask people what they want. <laughs> it's so simple, but people don't do it and it drives yeah. me nuts. So then what you're ultimately doing is you're serving your community, but I was actually just researching, doing some keyword research on burnout out. And I mean, there's a couple topics, symptoms of burnout, maybe 10,000 people a month search for that. Yep. Um, you know, how to avoid burnout or how to Big overcome one. burnout. Yep. And so, so it's both and you can really be serving your current audience. Well, and here's the thing, not every video you make is going to rank. That's no. important to set realistic uh, expectations. I like to use the baseball analogy, the American sport where there's, you know, you could have like a bunt real ugly and get on base. You could of course have a home run or you could have a grand slam. When it comes to YouTube for me, all I ever actually want to do is just get on base. Right. It doesn't need to be sex. If I just bunt the ball and, and people are, they're like, that was cheap, you know, boo. And I'm like, hey, I'm on base. And if each little video just doesn't do that great, doesn't do that great, but just gets a little traction, serves your audience, totally. gets a few views, gets more than the one before, the consistency, eventually you get that grand slam and then it also activates your other videos. Of course. Everybody gets to yep. get that run, get that point because you're really one video away on YouTube from changing your life and business. You know, it's been incredible. The list, this first few months of the year, the C, obviously all the numbers have gone up. Views, subs, watch time, everything. It's all gone up because we're being consistent. It's not rocket science. But the one thing that really surprised me was I did a video probably five years ago and threw it up on YouTube because I just wanted to embed it on my blog at the time. And it was just walking through uh, how to set up a Bluehost account sure. for your first website. And obviously there's an affiliate link in the video, below the video. In one week, we had two new orders for that video. No, nobody's watched that video, not really, not properly for years. And here we are just being more consistent with publishing new content 
And people are now going back into the archives to look at what else we've got done. And here's the thing, Sean, that video is not even in a playlist or anything like that. So they've actually gone to all videos and they were just moving through. Five years ago, I published it. They've scrolled a lot to get to that video. Yeah, that's powerful. And now they're clicking on it and there's money coming in from I mean, I think the other side of that is it also reactivates the YouTube algorithm. So there could be a dimension of search and distribution. More than scrolling, what probably happened was that was maybe one of your better performing videos from the old days. Right. You're consuming the new ones and it's showing up in suggested oh, okay. or showing up at the end of the video. Yeah, yeah. That's why the amount of volume you put out like a, a lot of, I mean, we could be as strategic as possible, but at the end of the day, like you then just leave it up to kind of the YouTube gods. Right. And some of your videos are going to pop off, but through the suggested algorithm and the YouTube algorithm is amazing. When you get sucked into that thing, it's like a snowball of momentum. YouTube just wants people to keep watching more videos. So as soon as someone connects with you, this is the beauty of having a library, a back catalog. They go, man, that helped. That was a great video. That was a great tip. YouTube's going to keep serving them up one after another yep. videos from your library because they just watched a video of yours. In fact, People probably notice on your homepage, as soon as you consume a video, they'll start pushing videos totally. from that creator to you. Yep. So that's not only why you want to be consistent, but it's why you want to be a well, why you want to build a well-optimized library. Right. Because um, great things take time, but you really build momentum over time. On yeah, YouTube. and we've, we've gone back in to look at the videos that have performed slightly better than others. We've redone thumbnails and we've tweaked titles and we've done a little keyword research so we can tweak things. I, it, it's, be, it's been interesting because, you know, as someone, you don't know what you don't know. I say that all the time. So I turn to people like Sean and I read his book and I, uh, who was the guy you wrote it with, Benji was it? Benji wrote, Travis, yeah, yeah. YouTube so I, Secrets. We read his book, um, we'll link to it below. Um, I gave the book to my daughter, Chloe, who's 21, right out of university, loves Instagram, spends time on YouTube, but has no idea how to build a channel. So now she's reading the book. She's also reading Amy Landino's first book, uh, Vlog Boss Vlog, as well. Yeah. And she's now, fundamentally spearheading the growth of the YouTube channel to the point actually where daddy is very impressed where she's come dad here's another 20 ideas I've already put them through tube buddy there you go here are the the scores yes. like maybe we can tweak this and the other and get back to the burnout thing when we when we did two or three different um, titles there was one where she added in the word entrepreneurial and that Tube Buddy SEO score went from like 55 up into the early 80s. So clearly we go with that title, right? Yes. So the research is important. So powerful. Yeah. Um, okay, before we wrap up, one big tip that you think that is, is relatively easy to put into action that is going to have some really powerful results for people over maybe more of a mid to long term. You are in it for the long game, by the way. This this is not a short term game, right? Yeah. You got one big magic tip, do you think? I think one of my favorite strategies that can kind of take, you can experiment with it and you can have a lot of impact in the short term, but you have the chance to blow up and we call it trend surfing and influence surfing. And these, okay. this strategy is similar. Uh, what essentially it is, is a trend could be something that's trending in entrepreneurship. For example, for a while there was the concept of grit that was really popular because mm -hmm. Angela Duckworth yeah, wrote a book, book called Grit. Yeah. Um, you know, you would notice uh, you, if you were during that time, Brennan Burchard made a video on how to develop grit. And that was not by accident. The book was trending. It was like number one. It was kind of the hot topic in entrepreneurship. So he was jumping on the trend as he also speaks about personal development. Mm -hmm. And even in the beginning of the video, he simply said, hey, uh, how do you develop grit? You know, you may have read Angela Duckworth's book. It's a pretty right. good book. But here's my take. And that was kind of his way of connecting and then writing on, on the trend. On a trend. Right. Influence surfing would be similar. You might connect and commentate. Now, this is going to take some courage. It's going to take some boldness. Pat Flynn, good friend of the show, right, did uh, one where he reacted to something that Gary Vee said about passive income. That's right. He has yeah. smart passive income. Right. And Gary Vee was like, passive income is BS. Well, right. of course, he was saying the majority of it and not the way Pat teaches it. Right. But a polarizing topic to jump into the conversation totally. around. It would have been silly if Pat didn't 
reply to one hundred percent. Yeah. So I think having the courage <clears throat> as an entrepreneur to jump on trending topics that could be what's happening in politics. It could be what's happening in culture. So one of our students, Doctor uh, Karthik, he has the Doctor K show, and his show, a couple hundred subscribers, few views per video, like fifty to seventy five views, which is great. Slow and steady wins. He's posting videos, but he gets an idea as we're teaching on this strategy to make a video called Real Mental Health Doctor Reacts to the Joker movie. And so he puts, he's got Joaquin Phoenix Joker in the thumbnail and himself, and he really breaks down the mental health discussions brought by this super culturally popular and sure. polarizing movie. Yep. So he ended up doing two videos about that, and one got 30,000 views, the next one got 50,000, 55,000 views. They continue to get views now. Tempering your expectations a little bit. This brings in a lot of people that maybe are just going to come in and stop mm -hmm. by and keep going. Yep. But people discovered him in the process and they were learning about the Dr. K show. And then they start getting into his other content that's helping uh, ambitious individuals and self criticism. Right. That's his right. uh, tagline. So, what was he doing? He was trend surfing and he was influence surfing. Mm. So, I would say for those watching, what are the you know popular things that are happening that could be they could be controversial things? A polarizing point of view is one of the best ways to stand out in anything. Sure. Potentially being contrarian and not just for contrarian sake, standing for what you believe in. Yep. Saying this person says it this way, I'm going to present it this way. And so uh, thinking about what's happening in culture, you should be talking about the hot topics that are trending, whether in books and authors or what's being talked about in conferences. You know, if if uh, for me, I need to be talking about the latest YouTube trends. Right. And when you break news, maybe last example is when we were just starting our video influencers channel, which is a side interview channel project that we do. Uh, it was uh, Periscope had come out. Meerkat had come out, which was sure. a live streaming yep. app. And everyone was on Meerkat. Everyone's pumped about Meerkat. And then kind of out of nowhere on a Friday, Periscope comes out. Just dropped. Yeah, it just yeah. drops. And then people were like, oh, no, you know, is Meerkat going to be able to stick around? So at the time, I was uh, not in full full-time entrepreneur. I had a day job, and I was trying to build my dream job. And so luckily, Periscope drops on a Friday. Saturday is my day off. So I and I and I saw it. I was like, I got to talk about this. Yeah. The video title is Meerkat versus Periscope. Mm -hmm, yeah. So all Friday night, I'm researching. I'm with my wife in bed. I'm reading the articles. I'm learning. I'm testing. I'm experimenting. I wake up Saturday. I kind of outline the video. I try to get educated on it to the best. Of, shoot the video. Drop it that same day. And that was one of our first breakout videos. Over 10,000 views. We only had a couple hundred subscribers. Mm. Led to like two, 3,000 subscribers there you go. because of trend surfing and influence surfing. I think part of it is being culturally aware to what's happening in your industry and what's orbiting around your industry that you could relate and pull in and talk to. But I think it's also speed. Speed matters. Yeah. When you are the first to potentially talk of YouTube's a search engine. People yeah, are looking for information. Totally, totally. So if you can react quick and to kind of land the plane on that, um, you batch produce videos. So sometimes it's it's both and totally. you build your pipeline yep. with twelve videos, twenty-four videos. But hopefully that gives you some freedom and margin to say when you feel it, you made us go live. I've yeah. done that a few times. New camera drops. Uh, Canon announces that the 90D, it's going to have 4K and whatever sure. else. And so I, I pull some things together and boom, I go live on YouTube. And yep. I get that title. I get that keyword search phrase. And I'm able to uh, jump on that trend and do some trend surfing. And it can really help you grow. I love it. So much fire. You brought it hard, just like you said you were. You guys, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed this video with Sean. I'm going to link to the channel, the website, the things, the, all the bits and pieces and all that good stuff. The things. The things is what it's all about. We'll see you next month with another chit chat. Until then, take fantastic care.